Good morning, everybody. Seven minutes on the timer. I know we're going to go beyond that. I'm going to try to take you higher above spiritual understanding, knowledge, and wisdom of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. If you follow me in your Bibles and make notes in the margins, your own personal notes, that's good. 15th chapter. What's it all about? Well, I'm going to read the middle meat, middle of the race, 1517, 17th verse. I'm reading in a revised standard. If Christ has not been raised many, many times, I didn't even count them, but I would guess between 8 and 12 times the word raised or resurrection is in the 15th chapter. I would say three locked in major doctrines. That's four times times three. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. Remember, I'm reading an RSV, 1972. Your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. If Christ has not been raised, Nothing about the blood here, nothing about the cross, nothing about calling Jesus Lord, because that's step one. If you believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, step one, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 8. All right, now, but we're talking about Christ here. If Christ, Romans 10. 8, 9 through 11, if Christ is not in you, you're none of his. So Christ is the issue and raised is the issue. I'll read it again from verse 17. If Christ has not been raised, your faith in Christ is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ, the anointing, have perished. If for this life only, only in this life as a human being, <laughs> excuse me, my nose started tickling way in advance. If for this life or in this life only, you have hope in Christ, we are of all men or humans <laughs> most to be pitied, excuse me again. That is the meat of it, 17 through 19. If you only have hope in this human realm, in this human life, <laughs> your faith is what? In, in the Revised Standard, futile. And uh, if you don't think he's raised from the dead. And in Christ have perished if he has not been raised. See, part two in Romans as you believe that El Father El Yan raised him from the dead, and that in Ephesians 4, the fourth chapter, ascended, 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 and guess what? We have appeared, 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 appeared just before his ascending four times here in the 15th chapter in 1 Corinthians. Because right after this, now I'm moving back up to 1, 2, and 3. And the one is... Christ Messiah, all right, you've received Christ Messiah, your sins are given. Two, he was raised, all right, on the third day. Three, he appeared, appeared to 500, appeared to Cephas, appeared to James, and he appeared to me, Paul, Saul of Tarsus. But when? Could be three to five years after the cross took him into the Arabian desert, Paul, Saul of Tarsus, taught him face to face. Paul, Saul of Tarsus is the 14th apostle, face to face chosen by the Lord. And he sent to us. So if you don't know Paul, Saul of Tarsus, life and ministry and the gospel that he preached because Judaizers came in behind him with mixture, Gnostic mixture, Christianity religion that is not the message that Paul Saul of Tarsus taught. 
not the gospel that Paul, Saul of Tarsus taught to Gentiles, the early church. Within the first 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of the early church called the way, the new sect called the way believers. They weren't called Christians till 10 years after the cross. So what was Paul persecuting in the first five years before his conversion in 35 AD? He was going to synagogues, finding Jews that were calling Jesus of Nazareth, Christ Messiah, putting them in jail. He was persecuting the new sect called the way. He was not persecuting Christianity. And church in Greek means the called out ones. They were called out from the religion Judaism into the Christ way, into God's ways, into the Christ way new sect. Wow. And raised resurrection in 20, then came to an end when he delivers the kingdom to God, El Father, El Yan. I just read verse 24. How does it read in your Bible? Christ, Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, raised and appeared and ascended. The last enemy death has conquered. The last enemy is conquered, destroyed. What's the last enemy? Death. And at that time, in 1524 of 1 Corinthians, then cometh the end when he delivers the kingdom to God, and I add El, Father El Yan, which means first, father, and highest. And as we read on, the last enemy, 26, destroyed is death. And as we read on, he is accepted who puts all things under him. Him, he is accepted. El Father El Yan, who gave him the authority and put all things under the Lord Jesus Christ, the title son. Christ is the son. God extension himself. Christ the son is the host for God the father, El Yan father highest who gets the authority and the power in the kingdom turned back to him after the last destroyed enemy death. And there is a spiritual body and a natural body. Read all of the chapter in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through the end of the chapter. And it's about you believing part two for salvation. That El Father El Yan raised him from the dead because your faith and belief is futile, it says, and you are to be pitied if there's nothing beyond this natural human life that our spirit souls go to and we get a spiritual body, immortality dwelling in the light, eternal life, joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ in a spiritual heavenly realm, a spiritual heavenly kingdom, a new Jerusalem, a heavenly city where saint sons abode with angels, similar to angels, light beings, similar to angels, spiritual bodies given to the spirit souls that lived in human bodies on earth. There, it, check this one out. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the next realm, the next life. May I repeat, flesh and blood. So there is life in the next realm without flesh and blood because flesh and blood cannot go there. So quit worshiping the blood. Quit pleading the blood over anything. The blood dealt with sin and no demons are afraid of the blood. There is no power in the blood. Quit singing songs about eternal power in the blood. There's no scriptural teaching for that thinking. Love you. I teach strong. It's no, there's no time left for mamby, pammy, sloppy, agape love. I'm teaching you the truth. Wake up, read the word. Ask for the spirit, the anointing spirit of Christ to bring you alive in spiritual wisdom, spiritual knowledge, and spiritual understanding of the Spirit. One God, holy, is one Spirit. Love you. Bye.